Mm. I got oh, I actually got a testimony. I got one. All right. Fork it up. Like it was hard to find. But, Fork um, it up. So yesterday, um, I sent everybody a picture of a snake. It was it was like a, a venomous snake in the back of my customer's house. Huge snake. Mm. But um anyways, uh, when I got going with the with the guy's house and I was showing him, you know, what was behind his yard, it was like a snake. He wasn't he didn't care. He was like, oh. <laughs> But um, yeah. I started sharing with him because he started talking about um, food and how a lot of people eat like the what you call that food the the test intestines yeah like, uh chitlins chitlins oh chitlins. he was describing how how they you know because I really didn't know what chitlins was yeah but he said what they were I was like ew and we just was talking and I started getting over to the conversation about how God has helped me. You know, for me, he spoke before about God. Right. It's cool. I could talk to my customers about it. And I can tell I was ministering to him because the way he was looking, he was like, whoa, you, like he didn't expect me to talk like that. Right. But I was talking how God has helped me with my eating and just with, you know, gluttony and all that stuff, eating all that unhealthy stuff and wasting money. I wasted hundreds of dollars on food for mm-hmm. years. And I was just explaining to him how you know, my faith and my words. And I was telling him how, like, just when I, like, when I first started doing this, like, getting off the fast food, and how I started getting those cravings real strong. Yeah. And I prayed, when I got the craving, I started praying, and I was getting really hungry. I was really thinking about food, like pizza or burgers. I was just thinking, <laughs> you know, really. And I said, you know what, let me go to the store. I got a thought. I said, let me go to the store and get some gum. And the gum is only, like, 35 cents. I went to the store. That was my work was let me go and get something to eat, but let me get something that's not what I want. Which right. Is, you know, something fast food. And I started chewing on that. And after I, you know, just got my mind off of it, God answered my prayer. And that, 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 um, craving, craving went away. Yeah. And I was explaining to him how I've been, you know, doing that and how I've been able to like lose weight from doing it and also save money from doing that. And it's like, I could tell I was like really, Getting to him because he was like, Whoa, he because he probably never thought of it like that. Like, doing it like I explained to him how that was my faith, and then right. I, was, I was doing exactly what the Bible says to do, and it's just you know, the faith in the words, right? And now I'm starting to think, like, because God, I'm telling you, before I used to try to not do it, eat, and I used to try to eat healthy, it never worked out. I always went back to doing it, mm-hmm. but it seemed like now something is different, it's yeah. Not the same. That's and the power of the Holy like, Spirit, yeah, yes. Now it's like I can go in the kitchen. And in my mind, I started getting these thoughts of throwing this with that, putting this with that, putting that season there. I even thought of a, a thought came to me to say, put that chili, put that chili seasoning in there with the vegetables. When I tell you, Pat, it tastes so good. I yeah. Was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was like a random thought, like put the chili, chili seasoning in there and then put the powder in mm-hmm. the I was like, wow. And so it's like, like earlier, I just had some food, uh, you know, a couple of rice and vegetables that I made last night, came, you know, for, for lunch. I just yeah. came for lunch. Yeah. So, Leftovers, and it's like God is. It's, I feel like now it's like taking it one day at a time. Now, first He's working on me with that, which is a huge help because it's saving money. Yeah. Now let's move on to the next thing. It's like now I feel like it's going to get easier with getting all the other stuff out of the way. Oh I yeah. I struggle with it. So that's my little testimony. I kind of was talking about that. And I can feel. I don't know if I may have, you know, get you know planted a seed or something of you know. Maybe I can do that too. This kid right here can do it. It's the older man I was telling this to. Right. <laughs> he, he, he was looking at me like, he should start looking at his face. It's like, what? Ooh, I never thought of it like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that goes back to what we talked about this day about the kids t- t- teaching the adults something. Yes. The adult, did they see that? See that? But thank God he wasn't the kind of dude to say, oh, what this little kid, what this little kid, no, he don't know that. He, he was listening. Right. Being receptive. I think that's right. Weird. Right. That's we'll what you call like easily entreated. Yes. It's yes. It's different when you hear about somebody young, somebody young telling you this. It kind of mm-hmm. makes you, oh, okay, let me listen to that. Yeah. This young guy yeah, that. sometimes it has more impact because they assume that the young bloods are going to be out there being about nothing but frivolity. And for him to see a man of substance talking about the things of God, changing his life for the better getting his body healthy, like, whoa, I'm not used to this. Let me listen to this little young blood here. 
That is such a strong witness. See, a lot of people, they want to come at you with, uh, uh, hi, do you know Jesus loves you and so do I? Boy, they used to fall flat on the ground with me. I'd be like, I want to tell them, shut up, get out of my face. I don't want to hear that religious <laughs> nonsense. It didn't relate. What you did was you took the real part of your relationship with God and and put it where the rubber meets the road. And you related to him where he was, period. You didn't go into some religious mumbo jumbo. You dealt with him right where he was. Wow. And that is what Jesus did. And that's what makes a powerful witness. It's it's the people that get up there and preach at you and talk at you. And, and I mean at. They're not really discussing anything with you. They're in that thing all by themselves thinking that they're doing something profound while the other person is in la-la land, they, it's in one ear and out the other. But when you grab a person right where they are, they can relate right there. It doesn't come across as religion at all. It comes across as, wow, this is a part of this person's life. It's a lot more palatable when it's a personal experience that a person is sharing rather than, Blah, 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 Jesus loves you. You don't want to go to hell, blah, 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 blah. You know, tell me something good. Tell me something about me. You don't even know me. You don't even know where I am. You haven't even listened. Wow. Yeah, so that's very good what you did. And even though it wasn't a, you know, you didn't close the deal and he didn't give his heart to the Lord right there, Johnny on the spot, you planted a seed. Now, my father told me years ago, that a man planted a seed with him. Check this out. He used to hang out at the bar with him. And the man told him, he said, I'm going to have to do something really hard. And he realized he hadn't seen him at the bar for a long time. And he said, well, what's the problem? And he said, well, you know, because they used to go over each other's house and visit each other. He said, I'm going to have to do something really hard. And he said, I hope you don't look bad at me, but I got a confession to make. He said, you know, Joe Blow down the street? And he said, yeah. He said, well, three years ago, I'm just throwing in numbers. I don't know the exact details. But three years ago, I saw a watch sitting on his, on his countertop. And I looked at it, and it was so sharp. And I snuck that baby and slipped it in my pocket. And we've been friends for a long time, but I stole from him. Now I got to go back and face him and confess that and hand him back his watch. My father was blown away by the honesty. He wasn't turned off by the sin. He was blown away by the honesty. That stuck with him. He was in his 30s or 40s when that happened. When I led him to the Lord, he told me that story. That's how it stuck with him. And at that time, my father was almost 81 years old. Mm. Mm -hmm. So those kind of witnesses stick with people. They don't go anywhere. God doesn't allow it. That's why the Bible says some plant, some water, but God gets the increase. And God got the increase in my father's life when he was almost 81 years old. 